A cordial greeting, today is Tuesday, July 25, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I would like to talk about two disturbances that we are monitoring in the Atlantic region. The first one is a low-pressure system located northeast of the Bahamas, with a low probability of cyclonic development in the coming days as it approaches the southeastern United States. Additionally, we have a strong tropical wave located south of the Cape Verde Islands, which also has a low probability of cyclonic development as it moves west-northwest across the tropical Atlantic. The first disturbance is of interest to the northern Bahamas Florida, South Carolina, and North Carolina regions, while this tropical wave is of interest to sectors in the northeastern Caribbean. I also briefly wanted to mention that Invest 95 is continuing to lose its cyclonic potential and is currently a strong tropical wave in the eastern Caribbean. It has brought significant rainfall to the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic in the last 36 hours. The forecast indicates that it will move toward Central America, Southern Mexico, and Jamaica, where there will be a high risk of flooding in the coming days. If you want to know more about the forecast for Invest 95, I invite you to search for a video I recorded earlier today, available on my YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's first talk about this low-pressure area located northeast of the Bahamas. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite image, we can see some rotation associated with this disturbance, which currently remains disorganized. However, conditions will be marginally favorable for some cyclonic organization as it moves over the southwestern Atlantic waters in the next few days. Although global models do not show cyclonic development for this disturbance, the National Hurricane Center has marked this area as an area with potential for cyclonic development. Regardless of whether it becomes a tropical depression or tropical storm in the coming days, this area of unsettled weather is expected to bring some showers to the northern Bahamas, Florida, and possibly along the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. At 8 p.m., the National Hurricane Center maintains a 10% chance of cyclonic development as this low-pressure system moves west-northwest. In reality, there is a low probability of it becoming a tropical cyclone. In fact, the ensemble of the European model also indicates a 5-10% to chance of development. For now, we do not anticipate significant development. It is important to mention that this area has relatively warm sea surface temperatures, exceeding 32 degrees Celsius in some areas in southern Florida and near the northern Bahamas. These warm temperatures also extend along the Gulf Stream parallel to the southeastern coast of the United States. These warm waters in the region can aid in some cyclonic development for this low-pressure system, although it is expected to be slow. The sea surface temperatures are so warm that when we look at the temperature anomaly map, they are 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above normal. Overall, we expect this disturbance to continue on its west-northwest track and will bring considerable rainfall mainly to the state of Florida, the northern Bahamas, and the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina. The forecast indicates that the heaviest rainfall will likely occur over central and southern Florida. As we can see on the Doppler radar projection, there is a zone of rain moving westward over the next few days. For example, on Thursday, it should be raining in central and southern Florida, extending through Friday and Saturday. This rain can be quite heavy at times, especially in the afternoon with the development of showers across the Florida Peninsula. Looking at the accumulated rainfall for the next five days, we can expect between 1 to 4 inches of rain, with the southern half of Florida possibly experiencing some heavy showers with the potential for causing flooding. Over the northern Bahamas, between 2 to 4 inches of rain may fall over the next five days. Now, let's move on to talk about the new tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center marked as an area of interest for cyclonic development today. This is precisely the wave I mentioned we would be monitoring during this week. When we look at the water vapor satellite animation, we can see that this tropical wave is accompanied by a broad area of moisture that will be moving westward over the tropical Atlantic. Remember that this Kelvin wave will be moving through the Caribbean and the Atlantic over the next few days, potentially creating more favorable conditions for cyclonic development in the Atlantic Basin. At 8 p.m., the National Hurricane Center gives this tropical wave a low probability of cyclonic development, just 20%. Generally, it is forecast to move west-northwest. If any cyclonic development occurs, it will likely happen northeast of the Caribbean region. The outlook looks somewhat favorable for the Caribbean as, at the moment, it is not anticipated to directly affect this area. However, we will definitely keep an eye on any changes in this forecast. The ensemble of the European model indicates a 60-65% to chance of a tropical depression developing east of the Caribbean, with a trajectory towards the west-northwest, passing well clear of the Caribbean region. Unlike what we saw with Invest 95, the tropical Atlantic region may have better conditions for development, particularly because this tropical wave comes with a broad area of moisture. Dry air is unlikely to be a significant hindrance, as it was for Invest 95, 
which fortunately prevented it from developing before passing over the Lesser Antilles. Let's take a look at some of the global models, as there is still some uncertainty. In the long term, the GFS model indicates the development of a tropical storm passing northeast of the Caribbean next Monday or Tuesday, but still close enough for us to continue monitoring the progress of this tropical wave. On the other hand, the European model has been consistent in maintaining a trajectory far away from the Caribbean region, passing hundreds of miles to the east and northeast of the Lesser Antilles. The German model forecasts a strong tropical wave passing just northeast of the Caribbean. The majority of the GFS model ensemble does not develop a tropical storm, but those that do have a trajectory passing just northeast of the Caribbean or very close to the northern islands of the Lesser Antilles. This is why I will continue to keep an eye on the evolution of this forecast, though I must mention that the outlook seems to favor a track northeast of the Caribbean without direct impacts. This is precisely what the ensemble of the European model shows, with all of them having a trajectory far away from the Caribbean region. Well, that's all for today's video. I will continue to monitor the low-pressure system moving near the Bahamas and Florida, as well as this strong tropical wave to see if there are any changes in the forecast. For now, we can rest assured in the Caribbean as it does not pose a threat to our region. I hope you all have an excellent day. Until the next video when I update this forecast. Goodbye.